What up, guys? Kevin here. Excuse me. Drinking some uh, artesian water from the beautiful country of Artesia. Go visit when you get a chance. Artings. My dog's licking herself right underneath me. Um, Artings. They're a site that reviews TVs and a few other stuff. They finally have their review of Sony X90K. We've all been waiting for it. Same with the million other <laughs> reviewers. I, I type in X90K, I'm like, yeah, why is my video still up there? Somebody review this TV, please. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I do know what I see, and I really like the TV, and it looks good. But if you want, like, a little bit more in-depth, finally got somebody here with Artings. And let's just see if what if it matches up to what I experience. Now, I don't have the TV anymore. Just real quick. Saw the X, no, the A80J, last year's Sony OLED TV, on sale for like $13.50. Bought it at Best Buy, went to go return my X90K at Best Buy, and they couldn't price match it off Amazon. So I was out the TV, and I went back to go the next day because I didn't think they knew what they were doing. And it was no longer on sale, so I'm out of TV. But I really like the X90K. I think once it goes down in price to maybe $12.99, I will get it. Amazon Prime Day, I think, is happening in a month, and I expected that to happen. I mean, every TV is probably going to be on sale then. But let's get to the Sony X90K TV review. Shout out to Artings. Um, look at all that green. <laughs> so I, I guess this is just a confirmation bias, and a lot of people want confirmation bias. Sometimes we don't really re watch reviews. We buy something and go, oh, my God, did I get something good? But here, all green. The highest is the video games, 8.4, and HDR gaming at 8.4. Sports is at 7.5. TV shows, 7.8. Um, yeah, that's, again, this isn't an OLED. This isn't even a mini LED. This is just full array backlight dimming, and it gets pretty bright. But I think Artings has some issues with the TV. Um, so here's their verdict. The Sony X90K is great for most uses. It's great for watching SDR or HDR movies. Because it displays deep blacks, makes colors look vivid, and has good local dimming feature, but there's some blooming around bright objects. It's also good for watching shows or sports in bright rooms with a couple of lights around, but it's not as good if you place it opposite a bright window. It has a narrow viewing angle that makes the image look washed out from the sides lastly it's great for gaming because it has hdmi 2.1 bandwidth for high frame rate gaming variable refresh rate a quick response time and low input lag for a responsive gaming experience yeah i i agree yeah it's definitely it's a little bit reflective i will give it that and the corners are pretty dark um something that yeah over that week i had the tv grew slightly annoyed. And I think that's just me living in a 2022 world, whereas my life living up until now, I've had TVs with dark corners. It didn't bother me. It's starting to bother me now. I want 100% of the screen just to look uniform, to look clean. So that's really my only issue with that TV. Um, pros, excellent contrast ratio for deep blacks. Absolutely. Excellent SDR peak brightness. Yes, uh, Google TV, yeah, I like Google TV. Colors look vivid and pop. So <laughs> when I return my OLED, people are like, oh, it doesn't get that bright. You just didn't break in the TV. But it's like, yeah, my X90K, like first thing when I started gaming on it, Horizon Forbidden West, I was like, man, the colors look vivid and it popped. And that was just in game mode. I don't use that crappy vivid mode. I mean, it looks great, but my God. Um, yeah. Cons, some blooming around bright objects. Yes, it's, that's definitely there. I'm not trying to downplay it, but, you know, I. if you're really that sensitive to it, get an OLED. Get an OLED. Struggles opposite really bright windows. Yes. And narrow viewing angle. That's just the VA panel. Um Price, like, I think it's like $14.99 for a 65-inch right now. Style, stand. I'm trying to go through this real quick here. 
bag. It's a plasticky, the design, the built can be a little bit better, but I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Got some thickness, 7.5 for build quality. The contrast, the native contrast, 4,800 to one. Contrast with local dimming is 63.99 to one, which is pretty good. I think that's pretty good. I did like the contrast. I did like, I mean, again, just the blooming around bright objects, which was expected. Um, yeah, that's pretty decent. I think pretty decent. I know my dog's drinking water. Apologize. 8.6 SCR brightness. Um, you can see the peak brightnessiness. <laughs> 7.5 local dimming. Full array, black levels. Um, it's not mini LED. We're, we now live in a world where maybe these TVs go away, like the TV like this and the X95K. Isn't the X95K mini LED though? But yeah, I think it's it either has mini LED backlight dimming, if that's correct, or it just doesn't have it at all. I wouldn't be surprised if next year um, the x 90 L. Please, Sony, don't do an X90L. Just skip the L line. Come on. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like um, mini LED. Because so I think Samsung, they, even like the A80J or Q80, no, A, the Q80A and the Q80B, I don't think they have local dimming anymore. Um... Let's see, Ultra dimming in game mode, HDR brightness, 8.4. It gets pretty bright. That's pretty bright. Yeah, the Sony X90K has impressive HDR peak brightness. Small highlights really pop for a satisfying HDR experience. Blah, 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 blah. HDR brightness in game mode gets pretty bright. It is great. And it's about the same as in custom picture mode. Visually, there isn't much difference between the modes. That's good. Gray uniformity, 6.8. Yeah, the gray uniformity could have been better. Definitely. Definitely. Black uniformity, 7.3. That's decent black uniformity. Viewing angle, it's a VA panel. We know it's not good. Reflections, yeah. Definitely can do better there. Um, Post calibration, 9.6. A blah 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 4k 8k zero yeah don't get this for an 8k tv because it's not an 8k tv color gamut why color gamut yes so i think it was our teams who reviewed x90j last year and there was some controversy whether if it had white colored gamut or not i think it did i think it had to get updated that it did but it is here, it's an absolute yes. It's an 8.4, their category. Um, gradient, 8.3, gradient. Um, permanent burn-in risk at a 10 because it's not an OLED. That's another thing, like, you'll see videos and everyone all the time, like, oh, you don't really have to worry about burn-in anymore, but you know, very, very, very select few. It's like, well, you know, we all win lotteries in our life. There's good lotteries. There's bad lotteries. Most of us win the bad lottery because we all die. Um, knowing me, I would win the bad lottery with the OLED panel lottery a term gets used a lot and I would get burning. I'm someone that falls asleep with the TV on. I play a lot of games with static imagery. So yeah. Um, just if you get one of these TVs, like, man, it's not an OLED, but just that stress of not worrying about burning, even though it rarely happens. You just, you're just gonna, you still think it's gonna be you, you know? Response time, 8.3, flicker free since 93. Motion interpolation, stutter 7.2. I thought the motion was pretty good. Yeah, all right. Now, here's the input. So, 1080p 60, 17.8. These aren't, for 2022, these aren't really great numbers. 
these are great if you're like me coming from like just the 900e a 2017 tv where in game mode it was like 35 milliseconds so you have it but like the samsung and lg tvs the, these are in the single digits uh 1080p 60 17.8 outside of game mode 161 that's awful and then 1440p 18 4k 60 17.8 um you know, if you do 4K at 120, 10.1, 1080 at 129.3. Um, yeah. You can enable motion interpolation in game mode. Um, supported resolutions. 1440p at 120, no. 1440p at 60, yes. Force resolution required, though. So, again, like... For gaming, I'm somebody that plays on a console. Like, seriously, um, the A8H, it popped up at Best Buy for, like, a really cheap price, but it was just unavailable. I would buy that TV in 2022. Why? Because I don't, I don't think I will ever play games at 120 frames per second unless that's pretty much all they provide. I will always play games at 4K60, and if the next console of the pro or the one after that can play games at a very high resolution at 120 then i would probably start thinking about getting a gaming tv but someone who plays ps5 series x they're not there yet you could play games at 120 most of the times they don't look good and the type of games i play you know i'm playing a lot of story-based games so that is just my need. Maybe your need is like, hey, I like to play shooters, even on console. I don't care about um, image quality. I just need that very high fluid frame rate. Then, yeah, I probably wouldn't get this TV. Um, LG. LG C1 all day. I don't know. No one talks about their TVs outside of the OLED like the Q and ninety, the Q Net ninety, I think is what it's called. I don't hear anything about their TVs, probably because they suck. But I don't know. I don't know. I just always forget about them. But they do exist, and I gotta assume, gaming feature wise, it's got to be there. Samsung, they have great gaming TVs. Um, I just like the picture quality of Sony TVs. Um, input two. HDMI 2.1, 3, and 4. Um, this is to talk about VRR. But yeah, VRR, if you put it in VRR, no backlight dimming. So, or no local dimming. So, be aware of that. It's another reason why I would probably um, either go with an OLED or another TV that does. I'm not sure which ones exactly do. I know OLED, of course, but just keep that in mind. But, yeah. Compared to others. So, the Sony X90K is a great overall TV with few gaming features and great overall picture quality. However, it's a bit of a downgrade compared to its predecessor, the Sony X90J, because it has more blooming. But it also has better gaming performance. In a TV market with fantastic high-end TV and budget models that provide good value, the X90K sits in between... And doesn't provide much extra against other TVs. Okay. And I, I get what they're saying. It's like, you know, $14.99 for not even a mini LED TV. You can get the last year's C1, 65 inch, same 65 inches for $100 more. And a lot of people, especially in the comments, you know, when I made that decision to return the C1 for this. We're like, what are you doing? Are you dumb? Are you stupid? Um, yeah, so it, it makes sense. It's kind of a tough sell. That's why I do think this TV will go down in price. Now, the Sony X90J, last year I remember turning it on and it was like the TV just farted light bloom at me, just left and right. I was kind of disgusted at times. Um, I don't know if that's because it was the first year of the cognitive processing chip. Maybe with all the updates that's been worked out, I guess so, comparing to our teams. But yeah, last year definitely had some picture issues with the X90J. The reds looked a bit orangish. I think the blues looked a little bit off. 
maybe that is the lack of the white color gamut. Um, if it was even there or not. But yeah, the blooming on the X90K, they had more issues. Maybe I was just expecting it, just going from an OLED going, all right, well, you're getting the X90K, so there's going to be blooming. And I just set my expectations for that. And yeah, it was there, but I wasn't like, I felt like the X90J um, bloomed way more than the X90K. But I am playing different content, you know, this last week or so than I was last year. To be fair, I think last year with my X90J, I was playing Returnal, a very dark game, and Resident Evil Village. Those were like the two big games I played. Very dark games. So this could be this could be a factual statement. In the end, yeah, the Sony X90J was on sale for $1,000 for a 65-inch. I think that's back up to like $1,199, which I would just maybe wait. I know at Prime Day, that TV will probably go back down to $999, and... I still think the X90J is a great TV, and if there's a $500 difference, yeah, I would probably just go with that. Go with that. Um, I would just wait for me. I'm just going to wait for the X90K to go back down in price. Or if I do see, maybe I'll give an OLED one more shot. If I do see like a 65-inch go under $1,500, i will buy that. Not the Vizio one. <laughs> oh, man. But... But yeah, there you have it. Again, you got eyeballs. You can get lost in these really in-depth reviews from these TV nerds who know everything about TVs, who are trying to explain you why this looks good, but you're the one with the eyeballs. So you can go into, I mean, be careful going into Best Buys and all that stuff, but yeah, I mean, you can, if you try a TV out and you're, you don't like it, like me with the C1, all I heard was just great things, but my eyeballs didn't like what I was seeing, I took that shit back. And got the X90K, and like it said up top, it was vivid and it popped. And I was like, yes, it did that, and I really liked the X90K for that. And all these other little flaws and all the stuff the other TV's doing, great. But at the end of the day, my only issues were the dark corners, and that was really about it. All right, I'm going on too long here. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for our teams for putting up a review. Shout out to them. Um... They are the reason why I got the one of the best TVs, the X900E. Back in like early 2018, I just Googled best gaming TV. And it was like under the mid-tier, the X900E. I was like, yep, buying that. It was that easy of a decision. But there you have it. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I really do need a new TV now. Um, so I'm excited. I don't know what I'm going to get. I even looked at the Hisense U8G. I'm willing to give that a shot since it seems like they fixed the ghosting issue. And man, if that TV is on sale for, I think it's on sale for like eight fifty for a sixty-five inch. It's a really great TV. You know, I'll put my uh, <laughs> Hisense bias aside because I don't like their. I just don't like the brand, but you know, got to be fair. Just got to be fair. I give them one shot. I feel like they might deserve another, but we'll see. Um, thank you guys so much for watching though. I'll talk to you later. Later.